family and friends and fellow YouTubers, it's Kim here from Hancock Homestead and Gardens. And this evening, I am going to be making some apple butter. Um, and I am going to be using the recipe that is in the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. Okay? And the recipe name is actually called Sweet Apple Cider Butter. Um, but at the bottom of the page, it does give you variations, and uh, one of those variations is a traditional apple butter. And so that is what I will be making, is the traditional apple butter. Okay, so I am going to need six pounds of apples that have been peeled, cored, and quartered. And if you watched an earlier video, you saw that I did do that. Uh, practically all day today and um, they are now sitting over here in this stock pot right there and six pounds is equal to 18 cups um, because one pound of apples equals three cups and since I need six six times three is 18 so I do have 18 cups of apples ready to go back there all right, so um, the apple cider recipe calls for two cups of sweet apple cider. Um, however, since I'm using the traditional, um, I'm going to pre be preparing the recipe as indicated, but I'm going to replace the apple cider with three cups of water, okay? And then I'm going to be increasing my sugar to... Um, five cups okay and so I'm going to need um, three cups of water and five cups of granulated sugar and then I'm going to need one and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon okay and I'm going to need one half teaspoon of ground cloves now I know from past experience that I prefer not to include the cloves and uh, that part doesn't really make that much of a difference, okay? So I'm going to be leaving off the cloves. So, very simple recipe. Apples, water, sugar, cinnamon, okay? All right. So, here's a tip I've learned uh, through canning this year is that I keep a, a raised tin on my table and then I can lay my book on there. That way, if you have any water or drips, it doesn't get on your book. It gets, you know, your book is raised. Okay. All right. So let me bring you in because I want to show you um, a, a trick that I did. Okay. And, um, and then we'll get started. Okay. So this recipe called for um, three cups of water. Okay, but I decided instead of adding just plain water, I took all of the peelings and the cores um, and I boiled them down to make, make like an apple water. Okay, and you can see that the peels and the cores, they've been boiled down and there's a really nice apple water back there. Okay, well if you can see because of the steam. Alright, let me get out my spoon that's not slotted and show you. All right, can you see how that's like an apple water? All right. Now, I know I tell you guys a lot of times that I pour the peelings and the uh, cores out to the chickens for them to eat, but there are other uses for your uh, scraps, I guess you might say, and that is to boil them down to make like an apple water or even an apple juice if you add some sugar to it. Now, um, the thing about doing it this way is you want to make sure you have clean cores and clean peelings. You don't want any wormy ones. So if you have some wormy ones, you want to make sure they go into a separate container. But if you have what I call clean cores and clean peelings, then this will just add more flavor to my apple butter than just plain water. Okay? Alright, so I wanted to show that to you real quick. Uh, now I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to drain it 
into my um, colander here, okay? All right, so I'll be back. Okay, so yes, so right here in the book, it even tells me, step one, in a large stainless steel saucepan, combine apples and apple cider. Well, we're using the water method, so I added an apple water. Bring to a boil over medium-high heat. Reduce heat and boil gently, stirring occasionally until apples are soft, soft about 30 minutes. All right. So that's what we're working on right now is step one. Okay, so the recipe called for three cups of water, okay? So let me get out my four cupper here. If you do not have a four cup measuring cup, I highly recommend them. I use it all the time. Okay, so I only called for three cups, so I'm going to measure out my apple water here until I get to three cups, and there we go. I have just a tiny bit left over. Okay, so I'm going to take the drained apples, and I'm going to put them back into my pan. To my drained apples, I'm now going to add my three cups of apple water. Okay. And now I'm going to let this cook down. Okay. And it's going to probably take mm, 30 minutes for this to cook down. Because um, you kind of start out by making an apple sauce, and then you go and make it even finer into a butter. So, let's let this cook down, and I'll be back. Okay, friends. So, um, we have finished step one. The apples with the apple water have uh, been cooking over here for 30 minutes. Okay, so step two says working in small batches, and that's just a little bit at a time, transfer the apple mixture to a food mill or a food processor. Fit it with a metal blade, okay? And so we have a a food mill. This is a graniteware food mill. I highly recommend it. We did a video on it on how to put it together and everything. Very nice piece of equipment there. And we're going to puree the apples until they reach a uniform texture. However, we do not want to liquefy. Now, this food mill comes with um, three different blades or um, slots and there's a fine and then there's a coarse and there's a medium and I have decided to try the medium um, so I have decided to try the medium uh, because we like our apple butter with a little bit of texture to it so um, Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and do 
step two. And I'm just going to use one of my Pyrex measuring dishes here. I'm just going to reach down in there and grab some apples. Put them into my mill. If I can put in another small batch over here. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to start milling it. All right, so uh, for each batch, I'm going to need 12 cups of the apple puree. So um, I'll be at this for a while. Um, as you can see, I'm just very uh, slowly grinding this. So I'll bring you back when I have 12 cups. Okay, so I wanted to bring you back for a minute because this pan is starting to get pretty full of puree. So I need to transfer it and uh, it says I need 12 cups so I'm going to go ahead and measure this out. I might have six in here. One. Okay, two. That would be four, because these are two cuppers. So, two, four. Okay, so six. All right, so I'm halfway there. All right, I also wanted to tell you a tip that I have um, to make this go a little bit faster is I got out my potato masher and I uh, kind of pre-mashed these uh, to make them into smaller chunks and then that way whenever I send them over to the food mill they're not taking quite as long to process down. So um, that's something I needed to tell you. And then also I wanted to tell you that this food mill gathers that stuff on the bottom so every once in a while I have to do a to kind of clear up my bottom part but um, yeah so I'm halfway there um, it's going pretty good right now it would make excellent applesauce um, but we're not making applesauce we're making apple butter so let's keep going okay guys so I'm down to my last couple cups here clean off my food meal get as much of that yumminess out of there as I can Twelve and one fourth, but I'm putting it all in. So there's twelve, and then, yeah, just that little bit left. All right. All right. So on to step three. Step three says in a large stainless steel saucepan. Combine the apple puree, which we did. The apple puree is in there. The sugar, and we need um, five cups of sugar. One. Two. 
three, four, five. Now, it did say that if you were using sweet apples, you should do five, which I am because I'm using Golden Delicious. But if you're using tart apples, um, you're to do six. But they said later on, if you do your taste testing, you might add a little bit more to your taste. But we're going to start with five. All right. So, cinnamon. One and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, so this is a one teaspoon. And another half of one. Okay. Now, since I'm not adding cloves, I have decided to add a little bit of nutmeg to um, give it a little bit more variety. So I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Alright. Now, now it says to stir until sugar dissolves and then bring it to a medium boil over a medium high heat, stirring frequently. Okay, and then um, once it starts to boil, you reduce the heat and boil gently, stirring frequently again because you don't want it to stick and store and scorch until the mixture thickens and holds shape. Alright, and I'll show you what it means by holding shape when we get to that point. Alright, so let me get this one moved out of the way. Let's get this one on. I'll start stirring this up. Get my sugar dissolved in there a little bit and then I'll turn the heat on. Let me show you what that looks like. Alright, so there it is right now. Kind of looks like an applesauce. But we are going to be cooking it down even more. And um, if you want it thinner than that, you can puree even uh, finer. But um, we like ours with just a little bit of texture. And like I said, it is going to cook down even further than this. So... All right, I'll bring you back when it starts to boil. Okay, so here it is so far. It's on a gentle boil. It's still a little thick. It's going to boil down, though. All right, so I'm supposed to let it boil a little bit longer until it reaches the thickness and consistency that I want. All right. Okay, friends, so I have let this boil and simmer, and I have stirred and mashed and just kept working until it turned into a puree, a very thin mixture, and now I'm going to do the test that they're talking about. So let me put you back on the tripod. Okay, so I'm going to do the test to see if it's ready to go into the jar. So what I do is I get a little bit of the apple butter and I put it on a saucer like that. Okay? And then I look at it. Okay? I don't know if you all can see that. Okay. So I look at it and if this had liquid coming down from it, uh, it would not be ready but there is no liquid. Yes, the texture, the apple um, butter is sliding itself, but there is no liquid. Okay, it is all firm. So that means that it is thick enough to go into the jars. Okay, so now I'm going to do a taste test to make sure it has no sugar. Mm. Yeah, it's perfect. All right. We're ready to start canning. I'll be back. Okay, so step four says to prepare the canner, jars, and lids. Alright, that's always a must. 
And to prepare your canner, what you do is you fill it three-fourths of the way full of hot water, and then you bring it to um, a boil. Uh, before you bring it to a boil, though, you put your jars down inside. There's a metal rack. You can set them on first, and then you lower them down into the water. And this has to come to a boil. That will um, sterilize your jars, but it also helps to process your foods. And then you also, and you also have to boil your lids and rings to sterilize them. So, um, my jars are just about ready, and we will start the processing. Before you start processing, it's always a good idea to just kind of lay things out in the order in which you're going to use them, okay? All right. And I believe we are ready to go. Um, I have a saucer out here to set my jars on, so I'm going to go grab a jar with my jar grabber. I'm going to dump out the hot water. It is boiling hot water, so make sure you pour that away from you. Okay? I'm going to leave it right there. This calls for a quarter of an inch head space. Okay? Now, this is called a debubbler, and it is um, marked so that you have, you can measure your head space. And each one of these is a quarter uh, increment. Okay, so I need to go to this one. All right, so I'll be sticking that, let's see, like that to see. So that will be a quarter inch. If I needed a half inch, it would be there, three-fourths of an inch, and then an inch. But I only need a fourth inch, so I'm going to go to that very first increment. Okay? Okay, and so then I have a funnel that I'm going to put inside the jar here. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's measure head space. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm used to using a ruler. To tell you the truth, this debubbler is new to me this year. So, I mean, I've always used a debubbler, which was a knife, but, uh, and I've always used a measurer, uh, which was a plastic ruler, but this little tool here, it's new to me this year, but it comes with the kits nowadays. All right, so you want to get your headspace pretty well. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to do what they call debubbling. Make sure there are no air pockets. Do another measure. And yep, we're ready to go. All right. So now I'm going to take um, a wet rag and I'm going to uh, wipe off the rim and make sure there are no uh, residue on there because you want a good seal. Okay? And then you're going to take a, a lid, put it on there, center it on there, and then you're going to take a ring and you're going to do what they call fingertip tight. Alright, and there's the first one. It'll be interesting to see how many of these I get. Um, the ball recipe is telling me I should get four pints, okay? But I am already up to four pints, and I've still got more jelly left. Um, seems like, for me, the ball recipe underestimates what you're going to get, which is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're doing it, to make you feel good. 
Um, but I mean, I'm following these recipes. So. But that's why it's always a good idea to have uh, a full container of jars because you just never know. And then if you need those jars, they're there. And if you don't need them, then they work as fillers. Alright, and then we're going to put these in the hot water bath for 10 minutes. Okay? For 10 minutes, and then we'll take the lid off and we'll leave them in there for another 5. So it's 15 minutes total. 10 with the lid on and 5 with it off. Oh my gosh, I just love apple butter. <laughs> it takes a lot of apples. But thank goodness we have a lot of apples this year. In fact, I still have more apples on the tree. I've done apple slices, which we've already used a jar of, it, of them for an apple pie. Uh, because I didn't want to go out that night and pick apples. And then um, I've got, so I have four quarts of apple slices. I'm now doing seven pints of apple butter. So I think my next thing will be applesauce. I'm going to put the lid on. We're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Alright, and now they will process and I'll be back. Okay, so I have just a tiny bit left down here in this pan. I'm going to put it in this bowl and then I can eat it on crackers. Look at that, that golden goodness. Okay, so there's my timer for the first 10 minutes. Now I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to turn the heat down and I'm going to let it set for another five minutes. are ready to come out. Let's see, listen for the pops. Mm, looks so pretty. I'm not sure uh, why mine looks lighter compared to the ones in the store, but I don't care. <laughs> it tastes good. But they have all but one successfully popped so far. And I'm not sure what's up with the one, but sometimes it just takes time. So we'll see. All right, and the last one popped too. So there they all are.